Hey guys, welcome back to the video series on deep learning. Now today we are going to perform the task of binary classification on the image data. Now to do this, I'm going to make use of special images that is called as cats and dogs guys. So I'll make use of the images of cats and dogs to perform this task of binary classification to tell, okay, given an image, whether it contains an image of cat or whether it contains the image of dog. That's a simple binary classification task that we are going to do. Now to do this, we'll make use of convolutional neural network, which we have studied till now. So let's see how we can do that. Now to get started, I'll just connect to my Google Colab instance. So this would connect to the backend server. In the meantime, I'll write the code to get the data from my Dropbox. So I have saved my code or I've saved my data set in the Dropbox. So I'll just download that file from the Dropbox. So this will take care of downloading the file from my Dropbox. And once it's downloaded, okay, that was very fast. I'm going to perform unzip activity. So unzip, I'll say, cat dog dot zip and after that i'm going to remove as well i don't want to keep it in the memory so cat dog dot zip so i'll just execute this so this would unzip it and this would uh, also remove my one remove by zip file okay this has been completed now i'll just clear out this output and let's display our file explorer so i have two folders as of now. So there is one test set, another one that is called as training set. Okay, that's great. So if I expand this uh, training set, it also talks, there is one more subfolder that's called as training set. And if I expand this, I'm having the images of cats and dogs. Now let's keep it very simple guys. Okay, so we'll keep it very simple. What we gonna do is, we'll just select this training set and we'll create it into three parts. We'll simply use this training set itself and we'll create it into three parts. And this time we are going to manually create the split. So I'm not going to make use of any library. I'll, and I'll show you how we can actually do this split, create some subfolders itself using the inbuilt Python OS library. So let me just show you how we can do that. Now before we get started, what I'll do is I'll just copy this path. So this, uh, let's say this is where I'm having the folder slide. So I'll just copy this path and I'll create it as a constant. So I'll say training directory. Okay. Or I'll keep everything uppercase. Okay. Training directory and I'll set it to be equal to this complete path. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three folders and those three folders that I'm going to call it as DIR. Okay. And I'll call it inside my Python list. And I'm going to say the three folders that I'm going to create is training folder, test folder, as well as my validation folder. Okay. Three folders that I'm creating. Now, where am I going to place this particular folder? I'm going to place this particular folder in a root place. So I'm going to say root directory. So my root directory will be in my current working directory. Okay. So dot represents my current working directory in my current working directory. I'm going to create a, a folder that's called as data directory. Okay, I'm just defining the constants guys. So once I execute the code, you'll understand what is happening in the backend. Next, I'm going to create some directory. So I'm going to say that if not OS dot path exists. Okay, so this is going to check whether I'm having the path which is already defined, which is present inside in my uh, working directory or not. So I'm checking OS path, OS dot path exists. And I'm going to check whether this root directory is already defined. Now, before we do that, I'll have to do one important thing. I'll have to import this OS library or else I'll get an error. So import OS. Okay. So I'm checking if the path does not exist. If it is, if it does not exist, then I'll do it like this. I'll say for, let's say D in uh, DIRS, that is the directories that I've mentioned. So I'm going to make sure that OS dot make directories okay i'll specify my path like this so i'll say os dot path dot join okay i'm going to say root directory 
and I'll be joining the name of D. So this means that if I do not have the root directory present, the folder name as data directory present, then I'm going to create a folder that is called as data directory. And the special thing is inside this data directory, I'm creating one more subfolder that's called as train. And along with that, I'm creating test folder. And along with that, I'm also creating a validation folder. So I'll just execute this guys. Okay. Okay, we've got an error. I think this is related to the parenthesis. So let me just correct it. Okay, so this has been executed. Now let's explore our folder structure. We can clearly see that this is a folder. Okay, so this is a folder. Now I'll expand this folder. Now inside this folder of data directory, I can see three subfolders, test, train and valid, just like we have specified over here. Okay, so what I have currently done is I have created three folders called test, train and valid. Now what I'll be doing is moving forward, I'll get all the images that are present in training set folder into copying all those images to train, test set, training set and the validation set. So I'm performing the split manually guys. The reason that we are doing over here is I, j I want to have more control on the data. So that's the only reason that I'm doing this. Okay, now in order to do this, that means if I want to move something out from one folder to another folder when I'm moving the files, I'll obviously require to shutil library. Okay, so I'll import this shutil library as well and I'll keep it ready. Now I'll write the code. So I'll write something like this. I'll say for directories that are present in list of directories in the folder of training directory. Okay, remember my training directory is my original training directory that is this. So if I simply expand this, you can see there are actually two subfolders that are cats and dogs. Okay, now what I'm telling over here is I'm going to say that, okay, I'll say os.path.join. Okay, get this root directory. And then get something called as train okay so create a inside my root directory go to the train folder and then create a directory over there okay and then os.mkdir.de so this de what it actually does is see i'm going to explain you step by step here I'm displaying all the folders that are present in my original training directory. So in my original training directory, if you have already seen, I'm having cats and dogs. Let's say I've, I'll get the first time I get, I'm getting the output as cat. Then I'll use that cat value and I'm joining that inside my training directory. So I'll say train inside my train subfolder, create another folder called cat with the help of mkdir command. Okay, now once I do that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select random images of cats and once I select the random images of cat, I'll transfer it to my training site. So I'll say for image in np dot random dot choice. Okay, I'll just select some images in a random manner. And once I'm selecting the images in a random manner, the way that I'm selecting is something like this. I'll say OS dot list directories. And where I want to list, I want to list the directories which are in the path of OS dot path dot join. And I'm actually inside my training directory. Okay. And DIR. Got it. So I'm iterating over every element. It's, it's not every element. I'm iterating in a random manner for the files that are present in the cat subfolder. I'm just giving an example. Okay. For image in this. So what, what should be the choice? I mean, how much that I should return? So I should return something like this. I should return the length of OS dot list directories of OS dot path dot join 
So where should I get the number of uh, directories guys? Yes, I should get the number of directories from here. Okay, so I'll use the same directories train directory comma dir okay once that is done i think it should be over here so i'll get 0 0.7 okay and i'm going to mention that replace is equal to false so what it clearly says over here is uh, let me just close this and i'll explain what is happening over here now i'm getting some random values from the OS list directories path. Now let's do one thing. I'll just take this code, okay, and I'll paste it over here. And instead of dir, I'm going to say cats, okay, and I'll simply execute this. Okay, it is expecting some parentheses. Let's keep that. See, this is returning me the list of cat images that I'm having in this cats subfolder of my training directory now what i'm telling to my system is okay let's do one thing i'll save this in a specific uh, variable itself cat dot list now i'll say cat underscore list so this contains the images of cats which is present inside my python list now i'm telling as okay np dot random dot choice now inside this np.random.choice, I'm specifying this thing. So we know what this thing is. So I'll show you what I mean. So before that, I'll have to import my NumPy library. So I'll add it in the above cell. So I'll say np.random.choice. And then, so this, thing that we have that is OS list directories and getting this uh, path join and everything. So this would actually mean the cat list which we have just created. So I'll say cat underscore list. And from this cat underscore list, I am specifying the second argument. So the second argument is the size. Okay, so if you look at the documentation of np.random.choice, it actually generates the random sample from a given one dimensional array data. So in my scenario, the one dimensional array data is the list of images that I'm having in this cats, lab, cats folder. So I, that is the one dimensional array. And how much that I should return? I should return 70% of the data from this cat list. Now, in order to get that, I have mentioned something like this. I mentioned as int length of cat underscore list and not just cat underscore list, I'll have to uh, get 70% out of it. So length of cat underscore list multiplied with 0 0.7. Okay, whatever the value that I'm going to get once I get, uh, once I multiply this length with 0 0.7, I'm converting into integers because like when I'm getting the images, I cannot get 4.5 images. I have to make sure that I'm sending the integer values. Hence, I have mentioned like this as int of length, okay? And then I've also mentioned one more parameter that is replace. And I've mentioned that replace as false. The reason because once I have selected that item or once I've selected that image, I should not select that image again. And that won't, if I'm selecting the same images in training set and test set, it doesn't make sense for me for creating three splits. I could have used something else itself. Like I, I, I there was no, 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 there was no need for splitting itself, isn't it guys? Hence, I'm specifying that replace as false. Now, if I just execute this, okay. Uh, it says keyword cannot be an expression. Okay, this is actually not an expression. See, there was a typo error guys. Now it has been fixed. So this has returned a NumPy array object where it contains the image names of the cats. And what I have done is I have selected random images and the length is 70% of my data set. So if I write something over here inside this uh, for loop, so what it actually is going to do is, it's going to extract the images of 
cats first it's going to extract images of cats and then it uh, it it selects 70% images or the 70% of the image that is currently present there and once it gets that 70% of images what we would do is we are going to copy these images to the original folder okay so that is what we are going to do now in order to complete it i'll write the command guys i'll say uh, org okay and i'll simply say os.path.join okay i want to join train directory comma dir comma img okay the image name that i'm getting over here so and then i'll say destination so that destination is something like this i'll say os.path.join and the destination is d and image name all right then in order to copy this i'll say shutil shuttle dot copy this time i'll say copy file specifically copy the file which is in original and copy to the destination and then remove my original so os dot remove org now instead of copy file i would have used move file but in case if there is any error in copying or any other activity i was not interested in uh, moving completely hence i am removing after copying so what this is going to do is this is going to select 70 percent of images in both cat folder as well as docs folder and once it does that it goes inside each folder and selects 70% of images from that subfolder and transfer it to the another folder which I have created earlier that is data directory train subfolder and places it over there. So inside my train, I'll create two subfolders. This time I'll say cats and dogs and in cats, I'll have 70% images from my original data and in dogs, I'll have the same 70% images from my original images. So I'll just execute this. okay so this activity has been completed now let me expand our train folder so if we expand our train folder i have two subfolders cats and dogs now if i expand cats i'll have 70 percent of images that has been copied from my training set and 70 percent of dogs images that has been copied from my test set for the dog subfolder all right guys so what we have done in this video is we have actually downloaded the data from a Dropbox and we have done some pre-processing activity that is performing the split between my data set into training set, test set and the validation set. Currently, we have seen how we can split the data from my training set into the training set itself that is training subfolder. And uh, let's continue in the next video. In the next video, we'll continue doing the activity and we'll move our data set to the test folder as well as the validation folder. So the strategy that we are going to keep is, I'll keep 70% of data for training purpose. And then I'll keep 15% for testing. And I'll keep another 15% for validation. Okay, so this is the uh, plan of action when we are writing this program guys. So I'll stop the video over here and let's continue in the next video.